So I like that story uh, because I think regret is a pretty powerful thing. It's a pretty powerful engine to drive a story. We all have things that we regret. And telling a story of the day you did something that you wish you didn't do or the day that you didn't do something that you wish you had done is, I think, one of the great story structures for fiction and nonfiction. Uh, incidentally, for a long time, Melvin was the name of my external hard drive. Uh, not that anybody uses those anymore, but anyway, I named it Melvin after that episode in South Park. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Nobody? It was very lonely. Uh, you know, there's that line in South Park where he says, you guys are Melvins, I'm not one of you. Nope. <laughs> All right, I'm alone. Uh, anyway, I was in graduate school when I did this, so I was not maturing quickly. Um, our, our next story is a bit of a change in point of view. Since you're all short story fans here, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so the first two were told from the perspective of students, but this next one is from the point of view of an administrator, uh, which is a nice reminder that any story we tell, even about a school, there are many points of view that we could choose from. Students, teachers, parents, and the story changes pretty dramatically depending on who is telling it. This piece is by the very funny Patricia Marks. Marks is a regular contributor to The New Yorker. She writes. Uh, about everything from virtual reality and emotional support animals. And she's written, <laughs> those aren't necessarily connected, uh, and she's written books including Starting from Happy. She also collaborated with cartoonist Roz Chast on works including You Can Only Yell at Me for One Thing at a Time. Uh, subtitle, Rules for Couples. <laughs> Uh, this piece, a parental notification from the near future, will be performed by a multifaceted performer who has appeared on Broadway in Company and The Band's Visit, for which she won a Tony. She's also a busy film and TV actor, appearing in recent series including Tommy and Ozark, now to perform Singing in the Acid Rain by Patricia Marks. Please welcome Katrina Lenk. Acid rain. Dear parents, what an exciting year 2058 has been for our third grade class. Summer is just about to begin and already we've seen 148 days of rain and a lightning bolt that spelled wear a hat. <laughs> As we prepare for our end of term barbecue, a few of you have asked whether the event will be canceled because Thursday's forecast calls for increased yuckiness. No way. Didn't we learn in October that when life gives you wildfires, make s'mores? <laughs> the prediction of a hurricane of hail and fire doesn't mean that it has to be all gloomy and doomy for our class, except for Dee Dee Davis, who was swept away by a roving glacier last week on her way to school. In lieu of flowers, please send donations to the Where Have All the Flowers Gone Fund. Care of Dark Horizons Elementary School. Our children are not the future. <laughs> Next, snacks. I know that we were all disappointed last month when our nutritionist, Mr. O'Donnell, announced that the cafeteria would no longer be serving its famous Miami coconut patty treats on account of Florida not existing anymore. <laughs> Mr. O.D. promises to whip up an even yummier replacement in time for the barbecue. I can't say more, it's a surprise. But please let us know if your child is allergic to anything, including radioactivity. <laughs> hey, I hope everyone is psyched for our year-end field trip to the newest Jersey Hot Springs, which used to be the Delaware Cold Springs, which used to be the Amazon.com rainforest, and before that, the island formerly known as Prince Edward. <laughs> we still have not heard from many of you about whether you'd like to reserve a level A hazmat suit for your child or supply your own. On the permission slip, don't forget to check the box that prioritizes breathing over once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> By the way, some parents have asked for guidance on the best way to talk to their children about our unfriendly environment. 
it's important to reassure young ones that it's not the planet that's going to disappear, just humans. <laughs> and anyway, this will probably not happen before school starts again. Why not make this a teachable moment and try to instill Darwin's concept of survival of the fittest? Then the fun part, explain that millions of years after mommy and daddy and everyone else your child loves is wiped out, a new life form will emerge and it might look like a sponge. <laughs> it's also important to let kids know that the apocalypse is not their fault. Mr. and Mrs. Nailbuff, this may not apply to Emily, whose science fair project, How to Make Ebola in the Kitchen with a 3D Printer and Some Glitter, is still in quarantine along with Emily at the Center for Disease Anxiety. <clears throat> one more moment, one more item before I tell you our gerbil news. Unless you're living under a rock, sorry about the avalanche on Lava Lane, Dylan. You probably know that our class recently made the front pages of both high mercury level news and Trump's wall tweet journal. <laughs> Thank you, Mia Stein, for bringing the screeching possum you found under your bed for show and tell and then whoops, fatally dropping it on its head. We were all glad when the critter finally shut up. How fascinating to learn the next day that it had been the last surviving screeching possum in the world. Congratulations to Mia on becoming the youngest ever violator of the Endangered Species Act. <laughs> to show its support for the Steins during their legal battle, the class voted to change show and tell to show and kill. What's more, we're working hard to even things up by creating a brand new species. Remember the ferocious striped polar bear that showed up in our faculty parking lot on Groundhog Day and still won't leave? <laughs> Mr. Alvarez, Earth Science, is showing us how to splice its genes with those of his dog. Cross your fingers, Mrs. Kittle's third grade class might soon be the proud copyright owners of the world's first polar doodle. I almost forgot to tell you that yesterday, while Mr. Alvarez was showing us the potatoes that came out of his garden already roasted by that thing in the sky we thought was a rainbow, our gerbil, our gerbil gave birth to an offspring, but we don't know yet if it's an animal, a vegetable, or a mineral. 2.3 ounces. <laughs> we named it spatula. 